Let's do a review and tutorial on how to use Sandmark 1.55 times squeeze factor anamorphic lens for smartphones. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Sandmark sent me this anamorphic smartphone lens to create a review and tutorial. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Let's start out with a brief history for anamorphic lens, which has been used in applications other than cinematography for quite some time now. It has been used in the military and also astronomy applications. Now, the unique characteristic of an anamorphic lens is that you have what they call the squeeze, and usually there is a number 1.55x or 1.6x depending on the lens that you use. This is what we call the squeeze factor, how much of the scene is being squeezed and how much more on the left and right side or on the horizontal axis you're getting to see in the image. This works really well for TV applications and also for movies because you want to see more on the side and it's also in general a horizontal format anyway. This can also be applied to photography, but mostly what we're gonna do is talk about this from the standpoint of a moving motion picture. Now, with that being said, anamorphic lens is really unique because it is one of the few lenses out there that allows you to pretty much maintain the vertical height being the same. So let's say you have a 50 millimeter lens and you have a 1.6X squeeze factor, you're still seeing 50 millimeters on the top and the bottom side, but on the left and the right side, you're going to see around 32 millimeters equivalent. And to calculate the horizontal focal length equivalent, what you can simply do is take the anamorphic lens focal length divided by the squeeze factor. For example, if you have a 50 millimeter lens and you have a squeeze factor of 1.6, you can simply take 50 divided by 1.6 and the number you're going to get is around 31.25, somewhere along that line. So what you can say is that the horizontal is now close to 31 millimeter or between 31 and 32 millimeter equivalent while maintaining 50 millimeters on the top and the bottom. This is a really unique and cool feature about an anamorphic lens. Now the other thing that you also get with an anamorphic lens are lens flare and if you have lights in the set, you can get different type of lens flare characteristic and color, and this is going to be unique to each anamorphic lens, so it actually adds a lot of creative effect into the scene. The one other thing that you are going to find out about anamorphic lens in general is that the bokeh or the out of focus area on the back, especially if you have a light, is generally going to be more oval shaped rather than a circle. Now because I'm going to be doing this demo on my smartphone and the sensor is really small, we pretty much get almost an infinite amount of depth of field, so we may not see bokeh quite as much as we want to see, for instance, with a bigger camera. Now, anamorphic lenses are not just only made for smartphone like this, although Sandmark have done a really great job putting one on a smartphone, but there also are anamorphic lenses for full-frame cameras, for mirrorless, many of them out there, one of them being C-Ray, which is the one that I have, that are really cool. Now let's talk about how you capture an anamorphic footage. Well, pretty much you would just use the default camera app on your phone that can capture video, very similar fashion to how you would normally film in a normal situation without an anamorphic lens. The only difference is that you want to bring that footage, that anamorphic footage into a editor, for example, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, and then do what we call a de-squeeze. To do that, there are different calculators online. I'm going to link to the one that I'm showing right now. For instance, I just have to specify the final frame width. I have to put in the amount of anamorphic squeeze I have and also the final aspect ratio. Now, as far as aspect ratio goes, you can use any aspect ratio you want that will convey and tell the story in the way that you want to. Different people will have different aspect ratio. I'll have you figure that out on your own. For this, we're going to use a standard 4K canvas. And what this is telling us is that the timeline setting, we need to use 3840 by 1920 pixels for the width and the height and then also there's a footage rescale so you scale on the horizontal and on the vertical axis a little bit different. Now if you don't want to capture the footage in anamorphic and have it squeeze it in post, what you can also do on the smartphone now is use an app for example Filmic Pro and I'm sure there are other apps out there too. And with Filmic Pro you can go in and choose to de-squeeze the scene and capture pretty much the way how the camera is going to see it and factor in all the de-squeezing so you're seeing the scene normal. If you don't do the de-squeezing, everything would look really squeezed in and your subject would look elongated. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna actually take this to do a demo and I'll be using Filmic Pro. So I'll use the front camera to capture me talking and I'll also use the back camera 
to film the anamorphic footage and we'll do a screen capture so you see what I'm talking about comparing the two different applications. And before we go out to film some footage with the anamorphic lens, let's have a look at what comes in the kit. You get this nice semi hard carrying bag that is well padded. There is a carabiner on the inside of it should you want to link this onto your backpack and have it hanging on the side or something. It comes with this nice little cute lens cloth, a pouch to hold the anamorphic 1.55 squeeze factor lens. And this is pretty much what the anamorphic lens looks like. It's really cool. And there is that mark denoting that this is the very top. And it also comes with a clip. So what this means is that you don't have to necessarily use this lens with their proprietary case, although there is some compelling reasons why you want to get their case instead of just using a clip. And I'm going to show you why now. So to mount the lens onto the clip, what you would simply do is open the rear element and on the clip itself, there is that screw thread. All the lens from Sandmark are screw threads. So this clip will work with other lenses that I have as well. Once you have that on there, what you would simply do is take your phone with the case on, for instance, or even with the case off. You can just clamp the lens or clamp this clip onto the phone like so. If you line it over the lens really well, you can really see that all the pictures are looking correctly. And what you can do is have this onto the side like so. You can then start to rotate the lens and having that mark at the very top. The only thing I don't like about this clip in general is that if you rotate it one way, it's perfectly fine. But if you rotate it to the other, you're going to notice that the clip is rotating first. And the other thing that kind of gets in the way is the other part that clamps onto the glass of the phone. You can see that this is also somewhat blocking the vision a little bit. So I don't think that the clip necessarily works well. If you're doing a few quick photos here and there, you're using a clip. I think that's fine. So you can use your phone case. However, if you're going to do, I would say, anything longer, like if you're going to film video footage or anything like that, I would definitely look into getting their phone case. So there are a few phone case that Sandmark has. They sent me two of them. There's one that is really like the basic one that's a little bit more plasticky. It doesn't, you know, I wouldn't say is like the best construction possible, but this is their more premium one. It has a MagSafe charging on the inside. The case hold really well to the phone. There are these physical buttons and this is a material that feels really nice. I don't think that this is a real leather. This feels more like a synthetic um, leather material or an eco leather per se that works really well. But what's really unique about this case in general is that you have this CNC aluminum frame that allows you to screw the lens into the case itself. So what I'm going to do now is take this Apple case off and I am going to put in that Sandmark case and we're going to take this out to do some filming with anamorphic footage. So. I'll do that. So you can see now my phone is in the case. This is more of like akin to the iPhone 11 era where the case has an opening on the bottom. All the new iPhone 12, iPhone 13 cases now has a closed bottom. I wish they really make the closed bottom one. I would feel a little bit better about it, but this is perfectly fine. So not a big deal there. And with, when it comes to the case itself, what I'm going to do is unscrew this from the clip. And what you would simply do is wipe the lens clean with their cloth and screw the lens onto the case as I'm about to do now. And just like that, I have the lens on the case. This is much more stable. It works much better and I can still rotate it in two directions. However, if I rotate the other direction too hard, it has a tendency to loosen up the lens a little bit. So Somewhat similar to the clip, but not quite as bad. And this is actually much more stable to use, especially on, you know, a longer shoot or if you're trying to do a long video footage. So let's go out and capture some footage with this lens. And I'll also show you some, I would say like early evening footage too, so you can see the lens flare and hopefully we'll see some of the bokeh. Okay, so right now I have the Hohem Isteta V2 as a camera stabilizer. I also have this Sandmark 1.55 times squeeze factor anamorphic lens on the iPhone. And you can see that everything on the screen right now is elongate. We get a lot of this like flare happening already with the light, which is really cool. We're gonna walk around and capture some more footage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of showing you this setup right now. So you can see that the lens is mounted onto the camera and I'm using the stabilizer. What I'm gonna do is switch to Filmic Pro or actually there is an app. It's not called Filmic Pro rather it's called um it's called Double Take. It's by Filmic Pro. And what it allows me to do is to capture front and back camera. Okay. Ah, there you go. A and B. Good. 
perfect. We're gonna confirm that. Okay, so right now I'm recording on my iPhone. I have the iSteady V2 linked up to it, and this is pretty much filming the scene. You can see that everything looks elongated, and I have to de-squeeze this footage afterwards. Um, there is a way to just capture this as an unsqueezed footage right away. Uh, you can see that I'm looking normal, but the scene that I have right now has a lot of the flare. As you can kind of see, the flare is coming in right now, which is really cool. This is kind of the whole main point about having an anamorphic lens is that you have these kind of flare running across the scene, which is really cool. And that is pretty much the camera I'm using to film the other clip with. So we're gonna see how that whole thing works out. So with Filmic Pro, I can go into the settings right away and I can choose, for instance, the camera I wanna use, but there's also different things I can do. For example, I can control the frame rate right now. I have it at 30 frames per second, which is perfectly fine. And you can go in and do a de-squeeze. For example, you can switch between cameras, um, the wide, the ultra wide, selfie and everything. You obviously have to choose the camera. And we're gonna go into the hardware. For instance, they have all these like different hardware and the anamorphic de-squeeze is just pretty much built into the menu there. So for instance, I can do 1.33. I could turn it off to which you can see the clip right now, just pretty much looking really tall and elongated. And this is 1.55 from Sandmark. And you can see that there is a difference. So there's also an option for de-squeeze in preview only. That means that you're previewing this when you're filming this, it's going to be a de-squeeze clip, but you have to take it into the computer and de-squeeze the actual thing when you're trying to edit it. If I don't have that option on like right now, it's going to capture the way how you see in the background a moment, which pretty much I can go in and use this right away. So for instance, if I start filming this right now, this is pretty much the way how my clip is going to look with all the flares and everything. I don't have to do that much work to it to get it looking really good. I don't have to de-squeeze this at all because it just functions the way how it does right now. But if I actually click the option, for example, to just de-squeeze in preview only, then what I have to do is go in and unsqueeze it afterwards. So I'm gonna stop the clip right now. And what we're gonna do is go back into the setting and we'll go to the hardware one more time. And right now it's like horizontal image flip. Nope, we're not gonna do that. De-squeeze in preview only, I'll sh turn that on. So now the moment I turn this on, this is going to be our second clip that I'm capturing right now. So this is the second clip I'm seeing on the camera itself, the phone camera, you can see that this is a de-squeeze footage as you're seeing right now. Everything looks normal. However, when I take this into the computer's raw footage, it's going to be a squeeze footage. And we're gonna do one more portion where we unsqueeze this and I'll show you just kind of around. For now, what I'm gonna do is stop the recording on the main camera. I'll take this around and just kind of do some shot with lens flare, which is going to be really cool. I've downloaded the anamorphic clip from the phone to my computer and I'll be doing the de-squeezing demonstration using Final Cut Pro. If you use another video editing applications, the process and the principle I'm about to share are going to be the same. If you do any type of video editing using an app on an iPhone, you may run into some limitation with the de-squeezing. For instance, if you use iMovie, I'm not sure if the phone version of that app does have de-squeezing or not, or can you go in and customize the aspect ratio I'm about to show you. So if you're going to edit on the phone, you may be better off just capturing a de-squeeze clip already using an app such as Filmic Pro. So what I'm gonna do first is show you a demonstration for a clip that has been captured as a de-squeeze one, and it can just be as simple as adding it to a timeline. So I'll start a new project and I'll just call this one already de-squeeze, and we don't have to do much. I'll leave everything at the default right now, and I am going to work in HDR color space because the clip coming from iPhone is that way. It just it helps save me some time so I don't have to add an HDR filter onto the clip itself. So we're gonna drag that in. Right now the clip is showing as a vertical, so what we're gonna do first is rotate this 90 degrees, and now we have that. What I'm simply gonna do right now is just scale this up so that the left and the right side is filling the frame, and now this is an anamorphic de-squeeze already clipped that was captured from the phone itself. And you can see that it's capturing all the lens flare and everything, it looks really kind of cool when you want to work in anamorphic and you get this really elongated profile or this elongated viewport on the video. Now, the aspect ratio that I choose right now, this is 4K UHD, and if you throw in this anamorphic clip in, you are going to get the black bars on the top and the bottom. There's no other way about it. If you want to avoid the black bars, there are a few ways to go to do that. One of the ways would be to create a new clip and rather than using this fixed 4K UHD, you can go in and create a custom aspect ratio one. 
So you can dial that in and you can choose any aspect ratio that you want. And this is also going to be what we're gonna do with the anamorphic clip that needs to be de-squeezed in just a moment as well. I'll cancel that out for now. Another way that you can work with this footage is to go in and do a scaling so that it's actually filling in the top and the bottom of the frame. However, when you do something like this, you are really cropping the side of this clip out. And you can see that we are cropping around 20 something percent of this clip off right now when we choose this aspect ratio. So it just really depends on what you want to do with the clip and what kind of story you want to tell. Aspect ratio can be used to tell a story very creatively. So ultimately this is going to be a creative decision that is entirely up to you. I'm going to start a new project that needs de-squeezing and what I'm going to do is create a custom timeline. So what I want is a two to one aspect ratio. I will type in 3840, which is the standard UHD 4K width. And for the height itself, I'm going to use 1920. So this is going to be a two to one aspect ratio. We're going to use 29.97 and I will leave everything in HDR for the time being. Now what I'm going to do is drag this clip in, which has not been de-squeezed yet. And yes, the clip is not in the correct orientation. So we're going to rotate this 90 degrees first and what we're going to do now is zoom this into the frame. And obviously, because this project timeline itself, the aspect ratio is different. We're seeing the black bars on the left and the right side. So what I'm going to do is sacrifice the top and the bottom of this clip a little bit and fill this to the frame. So you have something like that. If I show you the outline now, you will see that I am clipping the top and the bottom just a touch, but I don't really generally care too much about the top and the bottom frame anyway. But if you go out and film an anamorphic, this is one of those things that you really need to think about which way are you going to crop, what aspect ratio your final project is. So you have to do a lot more pre-planning rather than just, for instance, taking out a mirrorless or your iPhone and just capturing without anamorphics. So you don't have to de-squeeze it. You can just throw into the timeline and it works. But if you use anamorphic, some pre-planning has to go in there. All right. So now that you've seen this clip this way, in fact, we're going to do this at 200%. So this way it doesn't clip the side too much. There we go. And certainly you can always go in, move this up or down, depending on what, what part of a scene you want to preserve. So you can always do that too. I'm going to direct this clip into the timeline again as a secondary clip. I'm going to disable the background. And because this clip has not yet been de-squeezed, or both of them rather has not been de-squeezed yet, I'm going to de-squeeze one of them. So just to show you right now, one of the things that I didn't show you yet is that if you take a look right now on the viewport, you can see that everything just pretty much looks elongated. You get this really nice lens flare, but everything just looks kind of off. So we need to de-squeeze this footage. I'll disable this and for this one, I'm gonna leave it at 100% for now because it just makes de-squeezing a heck of a lot easier. I'll go into Safari and I'll leave a link to this website in the description below this video. This is one of my favorite aspect ratio calculator because I find it really easy to use. It doesn't ask too many questions and I get the information that I want right away. So for the frame width, I'm gonna use 3840. And by the way, if you need help with something, you can hover over it. Generally, it will tell you like what that may be. But the final aspect ratio, I'm gonna do two to one and see how it's actually telling you different things you can type in there. The anamorphic squeeze factor for the Sandmark lens that I use is 1.55, I'll enter that in. The footage size itself is the standard 4K UHD. If you're unsure what size footage you have, you can always go into Final Cut Pro in the project itself. Just click on there and in the info panel, you will see that is giving you the size. For example, this one is 2160 by 3840 because it is vertical. It's supposed to be the other way around, but not a big deal. So what we're going to do is go back and we're going to click on calculate. This is going to give us a timeline setting that we want to use because I already specified this in my timeline because I've been using this aspect ratio a lot. I don't have to enter that in again, but what I have to enter in is the scaling and it gives you the horizontal and vertical. And interestingly enough, when I try to enter this number in according to this website, the footage just kind of look weird. So I have to flip the horizontal and vertical, especially for like the clips taken with the iPhone. When I've actually filmed this on my mirrorless camera, this formula tends to work just fine without having to enter it in, in the reverse direction, but I'll show you that in just a second. So it's also telling you the very bottom, the discarded footage area. Right now, if I'm going to leave it at this aspect ratio and do everything according to what it's telling me, I am going to lose around 27% of my footage. Well, not a big deal, so let's do it anyway. 
I'm going to move Safari window just kind of down to the side so I can see the horizontal and vertical scaling options a little bit better. So you can see there at the very bottom of the screen. I'll highlight this clip now and go into just pretty much the clip property itself on the timeline. And I'll type in, for example, in general, it says horizontal is supposed to be the x-axis. So this is supposed to be 137.8 and the other one is supposed to be 88.9. However, we take a look at this, the clip just looks extremely strange and doesn't work right. When I was testing this out, one of the things I found out is that when we set this back to 100 first, one of the things I found out is that if we flip this around 88.9 and 137.8, this tends to look just about what we wanted to. And what I can do now is go in and scale so I can have it preserve everything left and the right side. You can see that it's not clipping out anything at all. I still get the black bars on the top and the bottom. So if you want to just really preserve the whole thing and not get the black bar on the top and the bottom, you would have to go in and change the timeline size which will overall change the aspect ratio of your video. However, if I'm going according to the website and I'm zooming this into pretty much like the 100% so that I get the clip, you can see that this is around a 27% footage on the side that I am losing. Ultimately, this really depends on what you want to do and how you want this to be shown. For example, I can move it to the left or to the right, and you can certainly go in and do like keyframe, dynamically move this throughout the scene too. So there are different ways of going about this. So now what I'm going to do is let's zoom into this one a little bit to fit. Let's see that. And what we're going to do is play this black. You can see that you have this anamorphic reflection and everything that's happening in the lens. It looks really cool. The footage does look normal. It does have some lens barrel thing. You can see like the columns are not going to be, you know, extremely straight. But overall, I think this is a really cool lens. And considering this is captured with my phone in HDR uh, in a dust, time um, this is when the sky is getting darker it's actually pretty neat and i really enjoy using this lens it's just playing around with this obviously i'm filming this using a uh, stabilizer which does help a lot if i'm walking around like this without a stabilizer it may not work too well and if i disable this clip i'll show you the one from before you can see that everything looks squeezed let's start out with the hallway scene again see how everything just look really tight so this is, in general, how you go in and deal with an anamorphic footage. Obviously, this is just literally the tip of the iceberg, but it gives you an idea how to work with a Sandmark anamorphic lens. And I think that if you want to play with anamorphic lens, you don't want to get into, you know, the full flash anamorphic lens for a APS-C mirrorless or a full frame mirrorless. This is a really good economic option to just give you an idea of what it can do what you can play with. And like I said, the lens does have that flair that's really known for anamorphic. So I hope you find this information helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.